Hi, this is Jundo. Welcome to Tree Leaf, or uh, I should say Jundo's bottom half, because today's talk is about posture, and I hope to continue with the wonderful talks that Reverend Taigu has brought to us these past days, because I'm here to say something that is actually revolutionary in the Buddhist world. Or at least many people are not going to like what I'm about to say. But I'm going to make it official. As of right now, the lotus posture is optional. And as a matter of fact, I don't even think it's the best way for most Westerners to sit. Oh, don't get me wrong. If you can sit in the lotus posture, like you see in almost every Buddha statue, I think it's wonderful. It's a position of great balance and poise and balance and poise in body facilitates balance and poise in mind because body and mind are not two. The trouble is I think with thunder thighed Americans like me with old football injuries turning 50 with a little arthritis showing up. You see I do once every couple of weeks or so sit in something approaching the lotus posture just to kind of stay in shape and sometimes I drop one leg that's a half lotus but more and more I've turned to the Burmese posture which is this where does it come from take a guess Burma one leg reclining on the floor as so in front of the other. I find it a position of great balance, great ease, and almost as good as the lotus. Most important thing, get your knees down. Reverend Taigu has been speaking about finding the posture that's right for you. As a matter of fact, it's a posture that's constantly changing and evolving even during a single sit and I ask you to listen to Reverend Taigu's talks again and again to understand this find the posture that's right for you you'll know it because it will feel right this is a good one but many Westerners these days are also sitting seiza or on benches sometimes turning the zafu sideways sometimes sitting on chairs. Well, I think chair sitting has to be done carefully, but I think all those postures, if done right, are wonderful ways to sit. And how do you know when they're right? When you can forget about the body, when the body is no longer a problem, when it just drops from mind. It's good to sit with pain sometimes, because in Zazen we take life as it comes, and life is sometimes painful. So to sit with a little knee ache or back ache or sleepy thighs once in a while, I think is good. We sit with whatever comes, not only the good times, but the bad times. There is no bad Zazen, but if Zazen hurts all the time, I don't think that's good. If you really have a physical condition where Zazen will hurt all the time and there's no way to avoid it we sit with just that but if you can avoid it there is no reason to sit with pain all the time so find the position as Reverend Tiger recommends that's right for you but I'm going to show you something else <coughs> this it's called lying on the floor it is also Zazen. However, I don't recommend it for everyone. The reason is it's too easy to fall asleep. But Zazen is done sitting, standing, running, jumping around, standing on your head, flying through the air. It's all Zazen. If done or not done, with 
the zazen shikantaza state of mind. So lying on your back is also zazen. However, because it's so easy for people to fall asleep, I only recommend it to people who are for example, suffering from chronic injuries or sick in bed. We have many people in the Sangha who are at home with debilitating health conditions. Several members of our Sangha who cannot get out of bed. Then sit like this in bed. It's all Zazen. If you need to sit this way, sit this way. Now again, if you can get up into the Burmese or Seiza, I think it's better. But if you have a health condition that requires it, this is Zazen too. So today, in solidarity with all our members who are sitting while lying in bed or sitting in wheelchairs or however else they are, I'm going to sit Zazen this way. Shall we sit?